Hello, I'm Paul. Let's differentiate gram-positive coxa. Gram-positive bacteria are bacteria that give a positive result in the gram stain test. Gram-positive bacteria take up the crystal violet stain used in the test, and then appear to be purple-colored when seen through a microscope. This is because the thick peptidoglycan layer in the bacterial cell wall retains the stain after it is washed away from the rest of the sample, in the decolorization stage of the test. In general, the following characteristics are present in gram-positive bacteria. Cytoplasmic lipid membrane thick peptidoglycan layer, tychoic acids, and lipoids are present. Forming lipotiochoic acids, which serve as chelating agents, and also for certain types of adherence. Peptidoglycan chains are cross-linked to form rigid cell walls by a bacterial enzyme D-transpeptidase. A much smaller volume of periplasm than that in gram-negative bacteria. Only some species have a capsule usually consisting of polysaccharides. Also only some species are flagellates, and when they do have flagella they only have two basal body rings to support them, gram-negative have four. Both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria commonly have a surface layer called an S-layer. In gram-positive bacteria, the S-layer is attached to the peptidoglycan layer. In gram-negative bacteria, the S-layer is attached directly to the outer membrane. Specific to gram-positive bacteria is the presence of tychoic acids in the cell wall. Some of these are lipotiochoic acids, which have a lipid component in the cell membrane that can assist in anchoring the peptidoglycan. Many gram-positive cocci are commensal organisms that cause infection only when they find their way into normally sterile areas. They are the most common cause of skin infections and a frequent cause of pneumonia and septicemia. Although they are generally susceptible to a broad range of antibiotics, Certain strains have developed resistance to many available antimicrobial drugs. So let's differentiate every test that could identify each specific type of gram-positive bacteria. In the gram-positive cocci bacteria, there are two major groups that we could identify them. First in the appearance of their form, Staphylococcus appear as cluster of cocci and Streptococcus appear a straight line chain. Second one is the different biochemical test to enumerate and differentiate the subtypes of this bacteria. First one. In order to differentiate Staphylococcus to Streptococcus we must perform the catalase test. The purpose of this test is to differentiate Staphylococcus from Streptococcus. The reagents are 3% hydrogen peroxide. The Staphylococci are catalase producing, gram-positive cocci. This group resembles some members of the family Micrococcaceae. Micrococci are Catalase producing, coagulase, gram positive cocci often recovered together with Staphylococcus and thus should be differentiated with the group of Staphylococcus. Next one, using oxidation fermentation test or also known as the Hue and Lefson method, the purpose of this test is used to differentiate Micrococcus and Staphylococcus. The composition of culture medium are low peptone. Medium, 0.2%, 1% carbohydrate, bromthymol as pH indicator. Fermenters are organisms that is able to ferment glucose in closed tubes and oxidize it in the open tubes. While oxidizers are organisms that give yellow reaction only in open tubes indicating oxidative utilization of glucose. So the Staphylococcus our fermenters and micrococcus are oxidizers. So we are now able to identify the group of Staphylococcus. But there are several subspecies belong to this group. First we need to perform the coagulase test, 
the purpose of this test is consider as the most useful single criterion for the detection of Staphylococcus aureus. The method in use here are slide method and tube method. Slide method is a rapid screening test that Demonstrate cell-bound coagulase or the clumping factor. Tube test is the confirmatory test to all slide tests that are negative on clinically significant isolates. It demonstrates the presence of extracellular coagulase or free coagulase. The reagent use is fresh human plasma or rabbit plasma with EDDA or citrate. So in the result of this test, the Staphylococcus aureus are Positive and Staphylococcus epidermitis and Staphylococcus saprophyticus are negative in coagulase test. So we need to differentiate these two negative coagulase bacteria to identify each of them. The best test for them is the antimicrobial susceptibility testing, specifically the novobiosin sensitivity test. The purpose of this test is to identify the coagulase negative Staphylococcus so the sensitive in this test is the Staphylococcus epidermitis and the resistant is the Staphylococcus saprophyticus. In the gram-positive oxide bacteria, there are two major groups that we could identify them. First in the appearance of their form, Staphylococcus appear as cluster of cocci and streptococcus appear a straight line chain. Second one is the different biochemical tests to enumerate and differentiate the subtypes of this bacteria. First one, in order to differentiate Staphylococcus to streptococcus we must perform the catalase test. The purpose of this test is to differentiate Staphylococcus from streptococcus. The reagents are 3% hydrogen peroxide. The result is the streptococcus are negative. In order to determine the group streptococcus, we should use the classification of hemolytic pattern by Smith and Brown. It involves alpha, beta, and gamma. In beta hemolytic pattern, it produce a clear zone around the colony, indicating a complete hemolysis of the red blood cell. For the identification of group A we need to use the antimicrobial susceptibility testing which is the vasotracin susceptibility test or also known as TAXOA. It is most useful in the identification of group A streptococcus and is based on the sensitivity of this organism to low concentrations of vasotracin in the reagents and supplies we use BBL TAXOA discs. 0.04 IU bacitracin, 5% cheap blood with TSA plates, sterile inoculating loops and in 37 degrees Celsius incubator. Then the presence of streptococcus pyogenes will have a zone of inhibition in the medium. Next one is for the identification of group B. We use the CAMP test. This uses beta toxin producing staphylococcus. Streak the beta toxin producing staphylococcus across the center of sheep of blood agar plate, then streak the streptococci to be tested at right angles, incubated and observed. For the presence of arrowhead-shaped zone of hemolysis which is around a test organism where it abuts the staphylococcus indicates a positive results, then there will be a fusion of aureus and agalactii and will confirm the presence of group B streptococcus agalactii in alpha hemolytic, the bacteria produce a zone of partial hemolysis with a brownish discoloration. Best test for identification of the bacteria is using the optochin test or taxo P. Optochin is a chemical used in cell culture. Techniques for the presumptive identification of S. pneumoniae, which is optochin sensitive, from other alpha hemolytic streptococci such as S. viridans which are resistant. The sensitive in the optochin is the streptococcus pneumonia, and the resistant for the optochin is the streptococcus viridans. Let's proceed to the gamma hemolytic 
In gamma hemolytic there is no change or hemolysis. Thus streptococci in this group are also known as non-hemolytic streptococci or indifferent streptococci. In the group D organism, PYR is the best test to differentiate the enterococcus from non-enterococcus. This test is to know if the bacteria can produce naphthylamide. Reagent include l pyrolide nilbatenapethylamide and the indicator is the p-dimethylaminosinamaldehyde. Then enterococci are positive in PYR test which has a pink appearance and finally the non-enterococci are negative in PYR test which has no color or no epithelamide. Produce.